Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. Let us go into part two of the title called The Year 2024, The Year of the Root Awakening, The Global Shaking. We will continue now from where we left off in part one. But this is part two of the year 2024. You need to go and listen to part one. Write the PowerPoints down because I have no intention in going back and repeating or reinforcing the PowerPoints which I gave you in part one. This one, we're going to begin to speak to you. The title, the year 2024, part two, but I'm going to speak to you concerning the dream. It was 4.30 a.m. And the Lord, for about an hour, hour and a half, to 6 a.m., tricked me into this dream. Now, before we go, or I go into explaining the dream, one, one of the things I want you to write down, for PowerPoint number one, you write down the visitation. PowerPoint number two, you write down Revelation chapter six, verse 14. Then you write down not only Revelation chapter 6, verse 14, but PowerPoint number 3, you just simply write down what he saw in this dream. Just write that down, what he saw in this dream. Then PowerPoint number 4, you're just simply going to write the words, one island. You just write one island. And then, could it be possible that God is saying that more than likely it is possible that in the year 2024 the rapture could happen or it could it be the year of the start of the great tribulation. Can I simply say to you that we are so close to the times of Daniel, not only to the times of Daniel where you're beginning to see that, you're beginning to see prophecy being fulfilled at such exhilarating pace. There are men and women, ministers in the body of Christ, that can't believe at uh, the pace and how things are being fulfilled. Not only things and global events that are happening so quickly and so fast, but I remind you that we told you in 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023, the Lord has already spoken three of the most important key things in the year 2023 and the year 2024. One of the things is God put the final shift, then there's the April 2023 20, message, and then now the year 2024. I know I said at the beginning of this telecast that I wasn't going to uh, repeat some of part one, but I felt to give you the, those three things which the Lord has already spoken. Now, the dream. And the Lord's visitation was unbelievable, uh, totally not only awesome, but in the way, in the way that He kept me just there. And when I say there, the Lord kept just showing me the same thing over and over. And what I saw was debris, like when there was an earthquake and buildings are collapsing, or a major earthquake, or where there is war and. Uh, buildings are being blown away. I, I saw that, and the Lord kept showing me that. But then the Lord spoke to me. At some point in that dream, remember it lasted for an hour and a half, from 4.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. But there was something that he said that stood out. Let's go, and let's read Revelation chapter 6, verse 14. It says... Then the skies recited as a scroll when it's rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Remember, I did a telecast, and for quite some time, the Lord has been saying that every mountain will not only be removed from its original place, but you're going to begin to see that islands are going to begin to disappear. The Lord just did something incredibly so powerful that quick the grace of God showed me stars and when he showed me stars they were falling from the sky listen remember we just finished doing a telecast 
uh, called April 2023. And I told you that the Lord took me into a vision there. And I saw the white dove, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the white dove was sailing, going up and up. And then I saw the saints and the believers going up also as well in the rapture. Could it be that God is saying that many have said that the rapture will happen in 2030, that will happen in 2033, and I believe with all my heart that I stand strong on not only the things that the Lord has been revealing since 2020 and 2021 and 2022, but in 2023, I stand on solid ground when it comes to Matthew 24, verse 3 and 4, but especially Matthew 24. Remember, God will shorten the days and the Lord said over and over he has not only been saying that the time is short and then the grace of God went on to speak and decree from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Is it possible that in this shaking, one of the things that involves in this shaking is that there is going to be, of course, drought and famine. The global food crisis goes into a whole different level. The financial markets crash, amen, the start of the Great Tribulation. And I'm not going to say here and say that the Great Tribulation starts in 2024. I'm not going to make prediction. All I'm going to say, we're so close to the time of the abomination and desolation. That's all I'm saying. And all I'm saying is that I see a, a blueprint picture and as I stand on solid ground that the good Lord perhaps could be speaking loud and clear from Matthew 24, verse 22. And the Lord just said to me, look, this, this, is, this is part two of uh, the year of uh, the year 2024, the year of the root awakening, the shaking. And I said, that's when the shaking will happen. No, it's going to ha not happen in 2023. It's not going to happen in 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, or 2030. It's going to happen in 2024. Now, is it possible that God, over and over, there has been consistency in not only in his forecast, not only God forewarning, using great men and women to not only to go into a place where the Lord is foretelling in times event, future event that was once where we believe will not happen or take place for another 20, 30, 40 years. God is moving things at such an accelerating pace. Like I said in 2020, he's not only speaking speed things up, but he's going to wrap things up so quickly that I said, remember the Lord said, at the twinkle of an eye, millions are going to get caught off guard. But I want to go back to Matthew 24, verse 22. It says there that he will shorten the days for the sake of the elect. The Lord just said to me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the restraint or removed from the earth. Look, let me read again the ending of verse uh, 14 of Revelation chapter 6. It says, And every mountain and island was moved out of its original place, out of its place. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm thinking of the title that I did, and when I spoke and I said that there are going to be mountains and islands that are going to re be removed out of its original place. But what's completely, totally blowing me away is how God continues to open the window and the stars falling from the sky. And this just blew my mind away. You need to write this down. In part two of this title of the year 2024, the grace of God said wormwood. Look, the Lord said wormwood. We are close. Closer than ever to the rapture. Closer than ever than ever before to the start of the great tribulation. 
closer than ever before to the two coming seals where God will seal the saints and not only seal the saints, seal, there's going to be somewhere in the near future that the 144 are going, a thousand, 144,000 are going to be sealed and the great separation because what I want to say to you that on that day that God spoke to me, when I was coming out of from Sam's Club, when I was coming out of Sam's Club, walking into in the parking lot, I looked up and the Lord said, the mark of the beast. And I have said what the Lord just said. Look what the Lord said. Write this down. Because I said this in part one of the year 2024, the year of the rude awakening, the second. God just said the final the final pieces where they are finalizing the biometric chip, the mark of the beast, that chip that they will put in your hand right here and you will see 666 on the foreheads of many people, not only millions of people around the world because they are not, were now in the times in which I said, we're going to go into the times of Sodom and Gomorrah, the times of Lot. You're beginning to see perversion. You're beginning to see not only perversion and sed seduction, lewdness acts, lustful, perverted, unclean things in broad daylight. You're beginning to see not only the paganism, the idolatry, the high places of Baal, the altars of Jezebel and Baal being built, shrines all over and altars all over the world, the coming seduction of Jezebel, where it says that Satan, along with Jezebel, as his agent, was seduced with the witches and war warlocks, with occultic and powers and Satanists and mediums and witches and warlocks and those that practice sorcery and black magic will seduce millions, millions. And that include millions in the body of Christ. Because the Lord said two things, complacency and compromise. And remember, I have said over and over, out of convenience, out of a survival mentality, many will receive the mark of the beast. And in part one of this title, the year 2024, the Lord said what? Hunger and starvation. And I said PowerPoint number eight to that part one title was drought. And also the grace of God just said to me, my goodness, the Lord said to me, and a famine, watch what he said, and a famine of the hearing of the word of God. And I believe that's somewhere in Amos, I could be wrong, but somewhere in the book of Amos, I believe there is going to be a famine of the hearing of the word of God. And it's amazing because the Lord, as I'm turning the pages in the Bible, in the word of God just now, the Lord took me exactly to the verse. And it's in Amos chapter 8. Look what it says in verse 11. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. Then I want to say this to you, that that was Amos 8 verse 11. And we, I believe we did a telecast on that in 2020. The common drought, the common famine, the famine of the hearing of the word of God, a global food crisis, and everyone needs to understand that God in this part two of the title of the year 2024, the dream, the grace of God has been speaking already some powerful things into this telecast. He said, Wormwood, he opened up my eyes and showed me a star falling from the sky. Then he said, what? Wormwood. And the Lord said another thing. My goodness. The grace of God said this, and he's been saying it. 
And you need to believe it. You need to wake up in this global awakening before that shaking comes in 2024. The Lord is sounding the alarm and the grace of God is saying you're going to be left behind. There is going to be desperation on the face of the earth like never seen ever before. Violence, hatred, hunger, starvation. You're not going to be able to pay your mortgage. You're not going to be able to pay your, your, your car payment. You're going to see that they're going to strip you of your power. Freedom of speech, freedom of right. It's going to start to take a whole different level. It's going to go into full speed. They're going to not only wipe out your assets, and I'm going to do a part three, the title called The World Economy Collapse, but what the grace of God has been showing me, and I'm going to speak and reveal to you in that part three of that title, The World Economy Collapse. But let's go back to the dream. Between that time, 4.30 a.m. and 6 a.m., the Lord is showing me to breathe like where there is, when, when an earthquake happens or when there is war and buildings are being blown up and places and nations that are being reduced to rubble. What I want to say to you, that the grace of God just said something to me. I, I, look, the grace of God said to me, and I, I spoke on this chapter many times, but Lord, and I, I just want to go there for a minute because the grace of God is not only making it very clear, making it very clear in this telecast, and he is speaking in a very powerful way because he just took me, just like he took me as I was turning the page, and he took me to Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Remember, behold, the days are coming. Tell somebody, behold, the days are coming where there's going to be a famine of what? Of the hearing of the word of God on top of Joel chapter 1, the collapse. The food crisis, the drought, the famine, not only violence on the earth, but remember that God took me into this vision. We, he opened the vision. I saw the Lord turn the page to Joel 2, verse 1. And that's why I said, behold, there's going to be a sound and a shout and a trumpet blast out of Zion from Joel 2, verse 1. From not only uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, 51, 52, Revelation chapter 4. And God is making it very clear that there's going to be a great clash that's going to go into a whole different level when it comes to the nation of Israel, Palestine, Hamas, amen, and every single person or every, every single person and every single individual and every single nation that hates the nation of Israel. They're, we're going into a whole different level. And I made that very clear. So no one in the body of Christ, not a single believer or saint, should be somewhat surprised of how things are happening so quickly because we deliver God's word on catch and go. We deliver the word of the Lord in the message of God and what God was revealing. And remember, I have said over and over, here in catch and go, we speak the very words that come from the very spirit of the living God. And you have seen over and over that there is a track record and not only a track record that we, speaks volume, but speaks concerning not only God's servant, but the things that God is releasing to his servant to speak to the entire body of Christ, but not only the entire body of Christ, to world powers, world leaders, and world government, and also to the leaders of the free world, to not only nations that uh, their leaders are dictators, and you got communism, but you got socialism coming, you got Marxism, and you got a one world government coming on board very, very, very soon and a new world order will be established sooner than you think so. But let's go to the chapter where the Lord just showed me about two minutes ago and took me there. It's Ezekiel chapter seven. And Ezekiel chapter seven, this is what the Lord says there. Let's just read 
from verse number one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, look what Ezekiel said. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. Tell somebody, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. And he says in verse, and it says in verse two, it says, and you son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel. In, in, the in has come upon the four corners of the land. Verse number three, now the end has come upon you, and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will repay you for all your abomination. Let's go over to verse number six of Ezekiel chapter seven. It says there, the an end has come. The end has come. It has dawned, dawned for you. Behold, it has come. Watch verse number 7 of Ezekiel 7. Doom has come to you. Remember the Lord said a week ago, and the Lord said in part 1 of the title, the year 2024, and also in the April, 22, April 2023 message, where God said, that's the prophetic sign to Revelation chapter 12. The woman, the child, the dragon, and what? The rapture. Look, you're, I'm beginning to see more and more I'm beginning to see, and I am convinced of Matthew 24, verse 22. 22. I know people are saying 20, 2030. Some are saying 2033. Some are saying that God showed them the last, the next hundred years. Some are saying that God showed them the next, the, the next 10, 10, 30, 40 years. But let me say to you that God is sounding the alarm. That he's going to wrap this whole thing. Because one of the things he said here in this title, part two, the year 2024, the year of the rude awakening, the shaken, will happen in 2024. God is saying, God is forewarning, God is foretelling already the forecast, revealing the forecast for the year 2024. And he is saying, get it right. You need to make things right with God, especially the Lord is showing me the backslider. You are lukewarm and cold, so and gone so deep into deep sin. You have not, you're not only found to be along the wayside you are lukewarm and cold and the Lord is going to spill you out and the Lord is putting the whole world all of civilization like he said a week ago and been saying for quite some time the Lord is putting the entire planet earth the heavens and the earth the galaxy he's putting everyone on notice but he's going to end this whole thing. And the Lord said, the end in the chapter, this is how he said it, the end in the chapter of all of civilization. Look where the Lord takes me, to Ezekiel chapter 7. And it says in verse 7, doom must come to you. It says, doom must come to you, who you who dwell in the land. The time must come, a day of trouble is near. Look what it says in verse 7. A day of trouble and not of rejoicing in the mountains. Let me, let me break this down to you. It says the day of trouble is near. That's Jacob's trouble. That is the times of Daniel. That is the time of the abomination and desolation. And can I tell you how quickly the Lord showed me? Matthew 24 verse 15, the abomination and desolation. We are going to go pretty soon up in the rapture. And we're going to go into the time of the great tribulation. And remember when I was coming out of Sam's club, when I'm going walking in the parking lot with my I go into the to our, our, our vehicle. Though I looked up and the Lord said, Son was coming soon. It's the mark of the beast. 2024 is filled with violence. It's filled with earthquakes. It's filled with pandemonium breaking out everywhere. Let me say that again. I felt not only, I felt so strong when I said that word pandemonium will break out in fear on the face of the earth. And God said, fear, watch what he said, write this down. Write this down, my goodness. The Lord said, fear upon the merchants of the land. Remember, that is, I believe, in Revelation. Revelation chapter 18, I believe, I can be mistaken. But in Revelation, it talks about the merchants of the land. Remember, the kings of the land, of the nations. And I want to say to you that you need to get ready because you're going to see the ten kings on the earth sooner than you think so. You're going to see a one world government system in place. A 
as we go into the fall of 2023, you need to look up, start looking up. You should start looking up already. Looking up because redemption is knocking at your door. We're near at the door. The door where the Lord is going to sound. And not only give Jesus the green light. The clouds are going to part way. We're going to experience the rapture. And those that are going to be left behind are going to be in the millions and there's going to be two out in the field. There's going to be two plowing out in the field. There's going to be two laying in the bed. There's going to be two in the mall. There's going to be two people in the vehicle, one driving, and then there is a passenger. And all of a sudden, there is going to be the clouds part way and the rapture take place. And one of the two is going to be left behind. And the Lord just said something powerful to me. Listen to what the Lord said to me. And he said this in 2022, and he said it in 2021. He's voicing his concern of this one thing that he just said. He said that the church is lukewarm. People are not praying. People are not seeking the face of God. People are not reading the word. People are not breaking bread. People are about going their own, about their own business. People are not attending the leadership, the leadership meetings. People are not attending their church service. People are, are completely waxed cold. And the grace of God says over and over in Matthew 24, I believe it's verse 12 or 13, that the love of his people will grow what? Wax cold because of lawlessness. You see the increase of lawlessness. You see the increase of deception in the times of the great deception. But it says here, a day of trouble is near and not of rejoicing in the mountains. Let, let, me, let, me, let me take that word mountain view. Let's look at that word mountain. Let's break that. Let's, let's dissect that word there. A time like Jacob's trouble, a time like the times of Daniel, but remember the dream that lasted for an hour and a half, May 13 was the day. May 13 of 2023, the Spirit of God shook me. I saw the breeze, and it was so much. Could it be that there is going to be where the, the armies of the, of the earth, the armies of the nations are going to come and attack this one particular nation? Or is it that nations are all going to go into a time of a nuclear arm race, like I said, where the Lord broke that prophetic and that prophecy, God's prophecy, in the year 2010, when I was in the city of Singapore, in a place, Pongo. Could we begin to see an acceleration where things are speeding up and God's speeding, mobilizing, gelling together and separating. These are the nations to the left. These are the nations on the right. And also nations going into battle, not only in the Indo-Pacific, but not only in the Indo-Pacific, but the South China Sea is already starting to taste like a burning bullet. I felt the glory and the power of God like the Lord is saying that that's about to come to pass and come to fruition pretty soon. The South China Sea and God sending a warning to the South East, Southeast Asian leaders that look, the South China Sea is going to turn into a burning bush and you got to protect not only your country, your nation, and your people. And I say this with a lot of respect towards Beijing. And you need to understand that this is not a time for you. And I'm talking to the leaders of Southeast Asia. It is not a time for you to compromise with Beijing when it comes to the South China Sea. Let's go back to my dream. One of the things that God said, besides Revelation chapter 6, verse 14, the Lord said, write this down. The Lord said, there is coming 
2024, where I said that he showed me and spoke to me, Revelation chapter 6, verse 14, there will be islands and mountains that will remove from its original place. And the grace of God begin to speak to me concerning that perhaps, and more than likely it will happen, that there's going to be one island, at least one island, that will sink and disappear. Let me say that again. There's going to be one island, an island, that will disappear, and the world will know that they will remember this telecast in this title, on Catch and Go, the year 2024, the year of the rude awakening, the year of the shaking. Now, I begin to close. In this part two of this dream, the Lord took me to Revelation chapter 6, verse 14. Then the Lord confirmed over and over that there's going to be not only, I believe, one of many islands that will begin to sink and disappear, but I believe one will actually disappear in 2024. Now, let us also speak more and more from a place of concern, but from a place of encouragement. I want to encourage every man and woman, especially the believers and the saints. I want to encourage you that if you're doing right, you're living right, you're doing what you're supposed to do, I want you to understand and encourage the believers and the saints as well as my fellow brothers and sisters in the body of Christ from Ephesians 4.11. I want you to know that all God is requiring of you to do is to maintain your faith. Remember, have an unwavering faith. Remember Hebrews 10, 23. I also encourage you with this scripture from Romans 8, 31, that it says, if God's for you, who can be against you? The word also says that fear not, be not afraid. What can man do to you? And remember Philippians 1.6. Remember this scripture also. Be confident of this. That he who began a good work in you. Will bring it to completion. And the Lord taking the church out. In the fullness of joy. So whatever happens. The shaking. The global shaking. Earthquakes. Food crisis. Rumors of war. Wars breaking out, financial markets and, and Wall Street and, and, and stock markets crashing. One thing that you need to understand, that God's divine economy will never crash. And the world is going to, and it's already, is the way I should say it, experiencing the collapse. But you, you just remain still. Look what I'm going to say to you. Remain still because of what it says in Psalms 46, verse 10. It says there, remember that God says, be still and know that he is God and there's none besides him. Look, what should we take from part two of the year 2024? One, you're going to have to try and be as much as you can debt free or totally debt free. You're going to have to begin to put some wealth away, have some kind of cash in your possession. Also, remember that the hatred is going to increase the violence. But I want to encourage and exhort and bring exhortation and comfort, and hopefully, you'll be in a place where you are being edified by the verses that I've given you a few minutes ago, that the grace of God will always take care of the saints and the believers. Don't lose hope. Remember Titus 2.13, we eagerly wait with great expectation that blessed hope from Titus 2.13. 
Hope will not disappoint you. Remember God said that Jesus will anchor us to victory. Let Jesus be the one that guide us and lead us through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leading us under the inspiration of his, of, of the Holy Spirit. Knowing that, the, that the, every name, in every name, every creature, every beast, every human being, all of civilization, heaven and earth, below the earth, every single thing is not only subject, every single thing is subject to that name of Jesus. And every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus is Lord of all. And remember, that God is showing me Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is no other name given in under heaven where anyone can be saved or salvation found, but only in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So if you're a believer, I would just simply say to you, keep preparing, not only keep preparing, but prepare, prepare more now because God is already telling you almost a year from now what's going to happen in the year 2024. And remember that going into 2023, the grace of God wants you to know that he's not going to let up. He's not going to relent. And remember, Satan is going to come at you with relentless pursuit, with relentless passion, trying to steal your soul. Not only remember John 10, 10, when it comes to kill, steal, and destroy, steal, kill, and destroy, however you want to say it. But Jesus came to give you life. Not only give you life, but to give you life more abundantly. I want to, and, and, and to say to you, you know, continue to just be a cheerful giver. And when I say cheerful giver, it, it, it doesn't, cheerful, cheerful giver necessarily doesn't have to do finances and money. A cheerful giver can be you giving, not only uh, showing and releasing uh, grace giving, the grace giving love of God, God's mercy, the love of the Lord, how much he loves you, and you releasing that godly love into the lives of other people in a time of great uncertainty on the face of the earth. I close with this, that as I said, and I have over and over said that whatever we speak here on Catch and Go comes from the very breath and from the, the very spirit of the living God, Abba Father. The grace of God said to me that those that are his, meaning he's speaking about sons and daughters, he said, they cry out, Abba Father. Remember the Bible says that his true sons and daughters, they cry out, Abba Father, glory to God. I close with this one thing, and that is to encourage every man, every woman, every mother, every father, every believer, every saint, every leader in the body of Christ to remain still, remain calm in this wicked storm that is coming and the time that's coming where we're going to be persecuted more and more, where we're going to see suppression, we're going to see people go into a time of depression and be depressed and not only suicidal mentality, but I want to tell you what the Lord said. Are you ready? Write this down. The Lord said, this is the time, look what he said, this is the time of the moment where this is the greatest moment to evangelize. The Lord said, this is the greatest moment to evangelize and to speak and declare the word of God and to share concerning our blessed hope and our blessed Savior from Titus 2.13, Jesus our Lord and our Savior. And the Lord just said to me, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, Jesus, the captain of our salvation, the author and the finisher of our faith, and he taking us up in glory. May the Lord so richly bless you. Remember to click like, share, subscribe, hit on the bell to receive our latest telecast, and I catch you on my next telecast. I'll catch and go. God bless.